Have you checked your watch? Because it's news o'clock. Hello everybody, this is Dave LeClaire with Make Use of Tech Bites, and we are here to take a look at the biggest tech news from the last couple days. There's been some pretty big stories out there in the wide world of technology. So, why don't we all just kick back, put our feet up, and watch some news. In our first story, Microsoft has a whole suite of new laptops coming that have 4G LTE connectivity and are specifically designed for people who are stuck learning from home. Microsoft is not making these laptops themselves. Instead, they have partnered with other companies such as Asus and Acer to bring five new laptops to market, all of which are affordable and all of which are designed to help make the learning process a little bit easier without breaking the bank too much. The cheapest of the laptops only costs $185. Now that one does not come with the 4G LTE out of the box that's available as an upgrade, but even still, a laptop that actually is good enough to use for basic stuff for education for $185. For any families who are currently struggling due to COVID-19 related issues, that could be a really big lifesaver. So we've all been there. You're sitting in front of your TV, holding your remote in your hand, you got your phone in your hand, you're looking at Netflix, and you cannot figure out what to watch. There is just too many movies, too many TV shows, and too much stuff on Netflix. Some of it you've seen, some of it you haven't, but you are gonna waste the next hour of your life contemplating what to watch. Well, Netflix has a solution for that coming soon because apparently a shuffle play feature is making its way to the streaming service. Now, it's not completely arbitrary. It's not gonna pick anything from the Netflix library. Instead, it will use its algorithm to pick something that it thinks you will like. So if you hate horror movies and you never rate horror movies high or watch them on Netflix, it's not gonna all of a sudden show you the latest B-horror flick. It's gonna stick with things that are in your wheelhouse Though it may expand your comfort zone a little bit, that's kind of the whole point, right? You want to find something that you wouldn't find otherwise. But it's not going to show you something that you'll probably hate. At least it's going to try. And if it does, shuffle again, try the next thing, right? Unfortunately, the feature has not rolled out yet, so you're going to have to wait a little while longer. Though it is expected to roll out in the first half of 2021, so we should see it within the next five, six months or so. This next story might sound a little bit boring, but... Just hear me out. Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon 870 processor. This is the company's latest affordable flagship chip. Now, why does that matter to you? Why do you care about a new chip? Well, the key word in there was affordable flagship. So instead of being the chip that's designed for the basic entry-level phones or the one that's designed for the top of the line $1,100 phones, this one gets your flagships that are in that middle price point, which is where a lot of people want to be for their smartphone. The Prime Core is now 3.2 gigahertz compared to last year's 2.84 gigahertz. Now that makes a big difference in terms of using apps and in running things that require single core. Multi-core performance is gonna remain the same, but that single core performance is gonna see a pretty big boost. The only other notable change over last year's model is an improvement from Bluetooth 5.1 to Bluetooth 5.2. That's not gonna make a huge difference right now, but it does future-proof devices that choose to use this processor. It also comes with all the other key features that you want from a upper level chip, including fast charge, all the 5G connectivity, all the important things that you're gonna get from a flagship phone. So far, companies like Motorola and OnePlus are on board to use this chip. So that means we should be seeing in the near future some phones announced that feature pretty good specs, but that won't break the bank too much, and that's always exciting. And in our final story of the day, apparently fitness trackers like the Apple Watch and Fitbit devices and Garmin devices can actually detect COVID-19, according to a new study. So studies were performed by the Mount Sinai Health System in New York and Stanford University in California. They were not funded by Apple or any of the other smartwatch makers. But what they found was slight changes to patients' heartbeats could actually be an early sign that they had COVID-19. In fact, it could detect it up to seven days before they would have been detected otherwise or the people even knew that they were sick and showed any other symptoms. So the study had more than 5,000 total participants, 32 of which had COVID-19. Using only the data from the smartwatches, researchers were able to detect nearly 66% of the COVID-19 positive cases days before they would have been detected by other methods. Now what makes this a big deal, obviously, is that we can detect more people who have COVID-19 and then they can go into lockdown and, and slow down the spread to others. It's a pretty big deal. I mean, a lot of people already have one of these fitness trackers and if this ends up being more of a widespread study and is proven as a reliable way to detect COVID-19, it could make an Apple Watch the best purchase you ever make, or a Fitbit, or a Garmin, or any other smartwatch that tracks your heartbeat and is able to keep track of heart rate variability. 
And there you have it, folks. Another episode of Make Use of Tech Bites in the books. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit the bell. Make sure to share this on Facebook. Make sure to share this on Twitter. Make sure to share this on MySpace. Make sure to, all right, that's enough. We'll see you guys in the next episode.